Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem 2573, find the string with LCP from lead code. Uh, I'll not be going through the problem statement, although I'll be dis uh, like explaining the pro uh, problem in detail, but I'll not be going through all the statements. I hope that you have already gone through, uh, gone through this statement before uh, coming to this video. So with that, let's get started. So what they have provided us is a LCP. Now what's a LCP? Now LCP is actually a 2D matrix. And uh, let's say these are the indexes 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. It would be a n into n. So over here it should also be 3. Cool. Now LCP ij would basically mean what is the length of the uh, longest prefix starting at the index i and uh, starting at index j. So from for substring starting at index i going up till n minus 1 and for the substring starting at index j going up to n minus 1 is there a common prefix between them so common prefix basically means let's say this is the string that was starting at index i and this is the string that was starting as index j right now what's the length of the common substring uh, length of the common prefix so this is the common prefix right a b and a b the third character is not common so this is the length of the common prefix or the longest length of the common prefix right Cool. So over here, the answer would be two for this. I hope that makes sense and that makes the question clear. Now, after that, what they're saying is that LCP is given to you. So LCP is provided. What you need to find out is that <coughs> is there a valid string? Now, it could be the case that there could be multiple valid strings, right? So in that case, you need to uh, return the smallest lexicographically smallest string that would have this LCP as the valid answer. If no string is possible then we need to return an empty string itself cool so what can we do over here now one easy observation is that since we are talking of the lexicographically smallest strings so the character at the zeroth location let's call it result right so my string that i'm going to return is result so the character at the zeroth location would definitely be a itself so as to make it lexicographically smallest what about the character at the first location now in case LCP 0 1 this basically means the uh, string starting at the 0th location and string starting at the first location right if the LCP 0 and 1 is 0 in that case they cannot not have the common strings right so definitely over here I cannot have a A because if a uh, result 0 is having a, a at the beginning and result 1 or the string uh, or the resultant string has A at the starting and it also has a, a at the first index in that case LCP 0 1 would at least be 1 right since we don't want that so these strings to be uh, need to be common or say, uh, they need to be different so what is the next value we can assign so a is already used right so i can assign it with a b cool that's easy to understand now let's try to generalize it now in uh, to in order to generalize it what i can say is that firstly i'll set the zeroth index of the string as a after that i'll start a loop from i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 this is because i is equal to 0 is already set then i'll start another loop from j is equal to 0 to i minus 1 because i want to check all the values to the left of it cool now i'll check if lcp of i and j if this is not equal to 0 in that case these two strings need to be same or these two strings have to have this uh, same uh, same index right at the zeroth location so at the zeroth location when i say at the zeroth location basically i mean the uh, okay so the zeroth location for this would be i right and the zeroth location for this would be j cool. so since that needs to happen so i can say that the resultant of uh, i would be whatever the value was at j itself and i'll break it as soon as i'm able to find a value for i i'll break it if this does not happen so if this constraint does not reach so by that what i can say is that this needs to have a different value so that the lcp does not become one or lcp does not become a positive integer for any of the values of j right so in that case i'll assign it the minimum possible value so my res j or res i sorry would be the minimum possible value now what is the minimum possible value so i'll maintain a character uh, character for that so initially the character would be set at b because a has already been consumed so the minimum possible value or the minimum possible next value would be b 
as soon as i use as soon as i utilize b i'll update it to c then i'll update it to d so over here as soon as this operation is being performed i'll update the value to okay so minimum possible plus plus or i'll just update the value to the next possible character now there are some checks that we uh, we need to do once we are done with this it could be a scenario that the string we have uh, we are uh, producing now is invalid so how can we get that so i'll compute a suffix array sum myself so i'll also compute a suffix array sum oh, that's basic dp stuff so for that what i need to do is that i'll make a dp or a 2d dp right which would be initialized to 0 obviously then i'll start a loop from i is equal to n minus 1 i is greater than equal to 0 i plus plus the other loop also would be from j is equal to n minus 1 Now the only reason I'm not explaining this is because this actually is okay. J minus i minus minus j minus minus because this is actually standard DP procedure and it was a hard problem on lead code. So I only wanted to uh, discuss the intuition in detail. This actually is basic DP stuff. So I hope that you already know about how to create prefix array and DP array, uh, suffix arrays. So if my okay resultant at i is equal to resultant at j, right? in that case dp ij would be equal to dp i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1 cool enough so that's how we do it at the end i'll have to check if the dp array is equal to equal to lcs or lcp that they had provided if this is the case only then i can say that my result is valid so i'll return result else i'll return the empty string so this was the solution uh i think this was rather a easy problem once you know how the intuition okay yeah over here so let's look at the solution i'd actually posted an editorial for this so let's look at that cool so that's what I, i'm doing over here firstly i'm assigning 0 to 0 uh, in uh, assigning a to the 0th index right and then i'm running a loop from i is equal to 1 to size minus 1 or n minus 1 then i'm checking if lcp is greater than 0 that means the string uh, strings would be similar at the 0th in index at least right so if that's the case then i'll uh, assign the value whatever value is available at the 0th index to the i-th index itself if such a value is not found assign the minimum possible value now in order to verify the result construct a similar suffix dp array if the dp array is exactly similar to the lcp then the answer constructed is valid else we it's not valid so that's exactly what i'm doing over here Firstly, I'm constructing a string n or a string res of length n, and all of the characters are a. You can assign it any random characters; it still would be valid because I'm actually explicitly setting the zeroth character as a. This you can remove if you're using the same uh, thing. Cool. After that, I'm set, setting the minimum character or minimum possible character as b. Right. Then I'm running a loop from i is equal to one till n. I'm setting up a, a, a boolean variable over here to false. This basically means if I was able to set the value at uh, the ith location to something or not. If I'm able to set it, well and good. If I'm not able to set it, then I'll update. Uh, like I'll put the value of the minimum possible characters at the ith location and I'll update it, or I'll increment it by one. Now this is a redundant check. You can actually remove it if you want. Cool. After that, I'm constructing the suffix count. Suffix count. Then I need to check. So if the two DP arrays or the DP array and the LCP are exactly same, then well and good. Or if they differ at any of the indices, in that case, I'll simply put a return a empty string. Cool. So that was the solution for the video. I hope you liked the solution and understood it well. If you still have a doubt, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. Bye bye.